Yes. Uh, I think it was interesting and easy for the SPL part. And um, I, I, about the the Q and start the Q part, I, I did not understand that I I should write a function. So it's at the end I have noticed that I just uh, did what I I read in the explanation and uh, I passed only the the first the the test case zero. So it's just at the end that I realized that I should write a function. Apart from that, I think it was interesting and yeah. Okay, nice. That's me. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, as Josiah said, yeah, I find the SQL part uh, a little bit easier than the QE part. Uh, the QE part almost took me like uh, a lot of time. I, I think I submitted last, I guess, that's the QE part especially. And yeah, I find. Uh, I understand it in the wrong way, so I tried to work on it like in the wrong assumptions and idea. So that took me like a lot of time. Finally, yeah, and I, try, I managed to understand it. Okay. okay. Turners. Um, hello. Um, hello. I have the same experience as Josias in that time. Uh, I started with the SQL SQL part and that was at least easier than I finished with the Python exercise. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Amanu? Uh, okay. Uh, I think the, SQ, uh, the SQL problems were uh, easier a bit. Mm. And for the uh, qui the qui exercises I think the the inqui the inqui method of the uh, qui abstract data structure uh, is relatively expensive with uh, type time complexity of uh, one or, or big O of one that is so uh, we rather implement a qui using two stacks uh, the idea is simple we put two stacks then uh, a stack is a last in first out abstract data type and a qui is a first in first out data type abstract data type so uh, we just reverse the order of the stack internally that is uh, we put the last inserted element into the stack in another stack uh, by order that means from the two stacks we get one qui so by just doing a pop and the push operations of uh, a stack, we can successfully implement the inqui and dequi operations of uh, a qui with uh, a less less of uh, time expense. I think that was the idea. Uh, yeah. So that's, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, just to ask you one question, am I, what which data structure did you use uh, for the queue? in stack for the stack implementation stack a stack two stacks okay so what did you use for the stack implementation which data structure i mean how did you implement the stack just the general data, data structure two arrays okay two okay arrays. yeah okay just want to ask uh, maybe uh, generals which data structure did you use for the stack implementation um, I used a list. I found it easier to remove and add elements and get what okay. I needed. Nothing, nothing. Was it nothing, Melissa, or nothing more? I think it's me who first. Okay, so which data structure did you use? Yeah, I used two lists. Okay, okay. Uh, hi, Nimikin. Uh, hello everyone. Um, the, the challenge was very interesting, and uh, the SQL part was direct and easy. But uh, the the Q the Q and stack part was a little bit tricky, and the tricky part was the the command prompt. Like the, I got it 
through trading gears, especially the inking part. Uh, but I managed to send me that. So that, was, that, that was good. Okay. Uh, and which data structure did you use? Uh, I used two lists. Uh, okay. Yeah, as a stack. Okay. Mm, great. So uh, just before we go to the demo, maybe uh, we know that the SQL part is easy. We just wanted you guys to know or be more comfortable and familiar uh, with the aggregate function in SQL because up until now, we've been mostly working on grouping uh, group it with the grouping function and the joins and some sim similar simpler functions. And you will mostly be using the aggregate function when you are going to do some kind of analysis or it's mostly kind of analysis work and you need to be comfortable and familiar. These are the simpler functions, the sum, the average, and the count are the simpler functions, but you need to think out of the box when you are going to work on much bigger data and when you are, to, when, when you are going to work on uh, much more advanced analysis. In the SQL part, uh, it's the combination of stack and queues and understanding how stacks are implemented and understanding how queues are implemented is fundamental for this week's challenge. Uh, just before we go to the demo, can someone just explain me the difference between stack and queues and the trade-offs when choosing the data structure for stack and queues? Just one point two. Internet. Uh yes. Uh, Mohammed, you can continue. Okay. Go on. Enter. Yes. Uh, the difference between a stack and queue is that a stack is a um, last in first out. So uh, you um, the, the last uh, in, um, the last element that was uh, important is 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 the was the first one to 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 remove. And uh, while the queue is the uh, first in, first out, so you add uh, elements to the end and you remove elements from the front. Um, mm. I don't know how to answer the next question, the second question, so I I will leave that to someone else. Okay, which data structure did you did you use in time? I used the, the list. Okay, okay. I I just was list. I didn't understand the part of using two stacks really. Um or I um I use just a simple list. I don't know okay. how. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks, Mohammed. Uh, yes. Uh, kind kind of empty said uh, all the things that I want to say. So okay. Yes, thank you. Okay. Great. Uh, okay. So so now we can go to the demo. Can someone share his or her screen and Tell us how you guys went over the challenge, how you implemented the stack and queue part, and maybe the data structure part is easy. We can skip that part. Okay, that's nice. Okay, let me share my screen. So the first part I had difficulty with, you can see my screen, right? Yes. The first part uh, I misunderstood was the actual inputs, actual the structure of the inputs. I thought it was they contain the in Kiwi and the Kiwi characters, and uh, I've tried to implement here, like as you can see in the except part. I've tried to implement those in the function that took me a while. Uh, I guess to just figure out to go back and read again the, the whole thing. Uh, yeah, I go only on the instructions fast. I missed a lot of important points. So the second issue I faced was like how to structure the how to read the, the whole inputs as well. So yeah, that was my issue again. So uh, I think this one this was not the actual code I submitted. I don't know why it's not showing up. Let me try this. 
that was the part uh, I debugged and changed uh, that too. Yeah, this was the why. So I, the first thing I changed was this one. I, I, I have to change all the, the, the all the inputs to uh, an integer, and then I have to just I have I created an inkiwi function just to reach up and so on. And the kiwi part. Uh, uh, just function. let me stop you there. Sorry, Nathaniel. Uh, what if your data wasn't an integer? What if uh, we know that we can store other data types, other data structure, other data types like objects, strings, and so on, right? We just don't do a map. We just don't. We don't okay. have to convert it to integer. Uh, I, I purposely do that. So first, I didn't convert it uh, mm -hmm. I, I, because the last function, the last print statement, will throw an exception if mm -hmm. it doesn't. It doesn't join an integer. It has to be mm. string. I didn't mm. convert it. Uh, mm. Later, I did, I did convert it. So this is the in Kiwi part. And okay. after the, the Kiwi part, I just reversed the first list. Um, yeah. So uh, I think in Python's list, it's by default uh, a stack with last in first out. So we, while we call a pop without an index, it just do what does it last in first out. So the last element that was inserted will be popped out. So that is. Uh, how Python lists work is the same as the uh, analogy of the stack. When it comes to queue, the, it has to be reversed while popping. But while inserting, mm -hmm. it has to contain the same values. So that's why. So I think in the command, we have uh, the first the first uh, integer will be 2. So if that's 2, just pop uh, last one. So I do the conversion here. So the, the, I think the three means print just print the last the first element, which is the last element of uh, our array. So we do last element of the second array or first element of the Q array. So we just operated the first list. The mine is called LST. The first list as a Q and the D list as a stack one. Mm -hmm. The reverse Q one. Yeah, I think that's. That's what I managed to do. Okay, excellent, nice. Uh, thank you. Uh, before we move on to Hila uh, I think it would be also based to hear uh, of trainees that were challenged by the contest, those who, d who weren't able to complete, and just share us your feedback, what you were trying to do and what failed, and what you need to improve. Gracias. Okay, uh, let me share my screen. Okay, yeah. Um, what I was trying to do is okay. What I was trying to do is this I did not understand that I should. When I read first, I did not understand, but when, when I came here, I did what is here. So in order to do that, uh, I just, uh, I use this and I follow each step and I pass only the first Third case. It's at the end that I was thinking, but why all this, then I I realized that normally I should define the function in order to do all. Yeah. In, hmm. So that is what I did. It's I did not understand that I have to pass all the F cases. Hmm. Yeah, I think that this is uh, 
this is a good feedback for all of us because uh, mostly there will be two or three examples on HackerRank or other platforms like LinkedIn and other uh, coding platforms, but you need or to also think about the edge cases of the given problem because when in our case in this uh, whether you use a list or uh, other type of data structure the list or the linked list might be empty or some other edge cases might also exist so we need to also think about those edge cases before uh, submitting our code i think this is a good one okay go on Okay, so did you manage to submit your code after that? Just yes. Yes, I I, I did. Let me show you. Um, I have submitted the codes. For that, uh, I did the same thing, but using list. So, but for the SQL part, what I did is here. Uh, yeah. I think those ones are easy. The SQL part is easy. So mm -hmm. I have submitted all, but I paid for the first one, the queue using to start. Mm. The SQL part is easy. I don't know if I should show the codes. I, I think go over the SQL parts because uh, we need okay. to know how to yeah. go over one or two of the uh, okay. this, questions for the SQL. Yeah. This was to count the number of cities in city having a population larger than 100. So uh. what I did is just this selected I would like to count the name of the cities and where the population is greater than uh, 100,000. So uh, apart from that, I think we have um, this. Average, we would like to know the average population of all cities in city where this week is California. So what I is this i have selected the average population where this week is california and i have the results and the last one was um, this the sum function uh the problem was to you know the total population of all cities in city where this week is California. So what I did is just to select the song where this list can come. That is it for the SQL part. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, just to add one question, not specific to Drusias. Uh, others can answer as well. Uh, which function would you use in SQL? It's straightforward, but let's just make sure that we are all on the same page. When you want to filter out your data based on the aggregation of a specific function, which uh, which function would you use? Not exactly function, but which clause would you use in a SQL? I think we will be using having clause, right? Yes, yes. So uh, I use that. I, I use the having, but I got another answer. I got nine instead of six. So that's, it. that's why finally I use where. Uh, okay, so the having wasn't working, or was it a different answer? Yes, the 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 answer was different with the having. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's why finally I used where. Okay. Okay. Uh, so normally we use having. I will look into that when we have when we have to, when we have to aggregate. Uh, the data based on a filter will be using the having clause because we can't use the where with an aggregation function like sum, count, or uh, average. We'll concatenate our 
SQL query with the having clause and uh, we can easily integrate or we can easily use the uh, aggregation functions with the having clause. Okay, uh, anyone else that wants to go over the SQL part? Okay, Helm can go. Uh, let me share my screen and can you see my screen? Yeah, it's coming. Okay. Uh, so uh, in the current stack part, uh, the idea of the problem is to use two stacks and uh, make those stacks to behave as a queue. Uh, and uh, for that, first I created uh, two stacks. Uh, and before that, I have to, uh, I, need, I need to define the number of interactions uh, our program accept. And uh, the first line is for that. And uh, I created two stacks. And the first stack is uh, to add values. And the second stack is to add the deleted values. Uh, Q is like uh, first in, first out. So, uh, and the stack is uh, first in, last out. So, uh, the first one is, will the first one will accept the added values and the second one will accept the deleted values. So, um, In the range of uh, our instructions, we'll accept commands, and after that, uh, I split the command, and the command splitting part is for the in queue because we send uh, we send a value with the instruction. So the default delimiter in a split function is a space, so it split our instructions within the space. So if uh, the first instruction is one, it's, it means in Q. So uh, I'll add the value to, to the, the first stack. And uh, the type is string, and I change that to integer. And if it is uh, a DQ command, and uh, if, uh, if our stack is not empty. If if it's if it's empty, we don't have nothing to remove, so we we'll ignore the instruction. So the second uh, else if does that, and after that, if uh, else if uh, double instructions are not in the command, so it, it will print out the. The, the first stack, the first element in, in the stack, that means first we'll get the size of the deleted, the deleted, the deleted stack size. And so uh, the first element means the size of, uh, the size of the deleted element in the stack one. So uh, I solved it. I solved the problem using. Yeah, nice. Uh, just to make sure, uh, I'm okay, sorry to interrupt. Uh, what's the type of the input that you are accepting from the user? Uh, I accept string, and okay. uh, then I I uh, I made a conversion to integers. For the values, but I, I directly passed the string value to for the checking part. Okay, so the first element of the string is the command whether to in queue or DQ? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Nice. Okay. Nice. Thank you. The, that's great. Excellent, Adam uh, I just want, uh, okay, the time has already passed, but if there is one volunteer, is there anyone that used? Okay, just yes. Yeah, I have a question. I would like to see an example of the use of the having clause in 
our of giant scale. Since I, I was I was getting different results, so I would like to learn about how uh, how to use it in the case. Thank you. Uh, okay, so normally we'll be using if there is someone who'd like to answer or before I go. Anyone or okay, what do you guys use for the SQL challenge? Do you use having or the way it close? Okay. Others? Okay. So uh when we would use, okay, when we would use uh, the where clause, the having clause, where we'll be using where when the condition that we are going to filter with doesn't uh, have the aggregate function, when it's a straightforward uh, condition. For example, where uh, x is greater than something, x is less than, or the operators, the normal operators, and also when matching with strings, when we, we can use the equal operator, and so on. We'll be using the having clause when we are using uh, on the condition part when we want you to use the aggregate function. When the condition is an aggregate, when the condition requires an aggregate function, we'll be using the having clause because we can't handle the uh, aggregate clause, the aggregate condition. Yeah, it's clear, but I would like to use the having clause for this specific example. Okay, so if you if you want to use maybe we can go over the challenge again and uh, let me show you that screen. Okay, and and actually show you what I did with the having and uh, somewhere. I don't know if my you can see my screen. It's coming. Yes, I can see your screen. Okay, so I think it's this one. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, what I did was this. I just said select. Uh, maybe I was wrong. And I did having uh, some. No. Yes, it's, that is what I did. But I know that it's not. Oops. So I would like to know how I can use this. Uh, can you scroll a bit up? Sorry. Yes. So it's what I did. My uh, keyboard can is you, having, okay. I don't can, I, can you also uh, select the population in addition to the count? Nothing else. Is that yes, uh, I think uh, you have to uh, group them by city name. By their city, yeah. you have to put them by their name in order to use other. Uh, so currently, you are we need the population being grouped by the city, right? We are aggregating the city's population, yes. So, what so, Okay, in order to use in order to use the having query, we have to first group the rows by one of the columns. So it, it, it wouldn't make sense to use having without the group by it. Yeah. And 
that's why I think I use where. But uh, Yedidia was saying that we can use having, so I would like to know how to use having this specific reason. Yeah, so if you want to use having, first you have to group each rows by their city name. Then you can use having sum of population greater than something like that. So maybe I will use this from city, I will group them by group by name, right? Name. Yes. Yeah. Having yes, having sum of population greater than sum of population. I did also this actually. The drum. Yeah. The drum. On the right. Yes. Okay. Let me. Okay. Are we selecting the name? No. Is it the name or counts of the name? Uh, what did you have? It, it has the, the uh -huh. counts, right? Yes, it counts. It's so ID. you have to count their ID or uh, ID? Uh, maybe try name. The counts of the name. Okay, yeah, I I did this, and yeah, I did this. I I had this output. Okay, um, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, just as maybe can you scroll a bit up? Uh, just for one, let me see the question. Can you scroll up on the question? Yes, uh, let me. Um, like I'm getting. I can't see my. I don't know if my, my screen is visible. Uh, it's visible, but. Uh, is the screen visible? Yes, it's visible. Okay, the question is here. We want to query a count of the number of cities in city having a population larger than 100,000. Mm, can you display the question? The question? Yes. I don't know if you can see the question. The mass screen. No, we, we can we can see the, we can see your screen, but we can we can see the question. Maybe is it in another tab or window? Okay. Yes, me... now we can see your screen. Okay. Uh, and I hope that you can read, right? Yes, it's a bit blurred, but. Uh... So the question is here what we want to query accounts of the number of cities in city having a population larger than 100,000. Okay, Kajan. Uh, so I think what it's currently doing is just counting the number of the number of cities in each group. So that's why it's getting six ones instead of the entire the entire value. So I think if we just remove the group by names, it should give us the correct result. If we remove this? Yes. This is what, what I was getting. Thanks. Oh, OK. Uh, Maybe can you send? I I will look into it and maybe let's discuss it on the DC channel. Okay. But it, it it should work because when we are going to aggregate, when we are going to perform, when we are when we want to use the condition, 
as an aggregate function, we'll be using the having and Antonin, do you want to go? Yeah, I I don't think it will, you, using having will be, you will get the right answer ever. Because without group by, you are going to, you are aggregating the whole table when you are summing the population uh, in the condition, I mean. So you will always have, you are summing the whole table and then counting the the cities, you are getting the whole number of cities in the table, I think. So I am, I'm just proposing that using where is the correct way is not, um, and we shouldn't be ha using having actually. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, just, um, <laughs> it's just my opinion. <laughs> yeah, no, feel free. Okay. Uh, it's something that we all have to look into and uh, if it's not possible, we'll say it's not, it's not possible, but if it is, uh, we can see that, or we can uh, have a look at how it can be implemented during the having clause. Nothing? Not I just have one another idea. Hmm. Uh, Josias, can you share your screen, please? I want yes. To make a, a, little, a little modification. Okay. So uh, add the group by query. Uh, city yeah, add group by. Group by. Name, name. Yeah. And on the count function, uh, remove the name and make it asterisk count or. Yeah, try the. Uh. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, can you sum the counts? So, sum uh, counts or can we use as the distinct? Sorry, I'm 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 jumping in. A distinct uh, will give us just uh, like uh, instead of uh, many ones, we'll get only one, right? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm it's not a sum, it's still. No, I'm wrong. Is it, <laughs> is it revising aggregation the count function? The question that you're working on? Yes. It's coming in. Is it revising aggregation the count function that you're working on? Yes, revising aggregation the count Okay, function. okay. Uh, Gideon and Michael. Gideon, do you want to go? Yeah, yes. So uh, can't we just use this code that I've sent in the chat? It's, it, it, it does the same thing that the, the question is asking us to do. Yes, this is possible. This is possible. We just want to try if uh, we can use the aggregation in the condition part. Okay. But this is, work. this is what works, right? Uh, yeah, just so ask. my question is like, every time we use group by, won't it just be counting or using those aggregation functions for each groups? It won't be using it for the entire data set, right? It'll just be, for example, if we are using count, it'll just count the number of maybe columns or items for that specific group, right? So why would we use group by? Yeah, you yes. are, you are right. You are yes. right for that. yes, grouping group by should only group those by the cities and uh, we can only get the records from the grouped by function. Actually, yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, Michael, is... Okay, uh, Emmanuel, is that... Uh, okay, so Emmanuel is saying rem uh, remove the sun. Is it then, is the having close or money? If we remove the sum, we can use having close, we will be using where close. Hmm. It should work. Uh, sorry to interrupt, guys, but we are using uh, the name column, but we should have been using the district, right? District? Yeah. 
Okay, let me write this tree. And if I want to use having clues, having clues, yeah. the sum, right? Why the sum? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, um, don't you have to group them? Uh, yeah, yes, having these normally for you. Don't, don't you have to group them first? No, so if I group them, okay, let me try. Group by? Group, yeah. Group by district. District. I think and I have the count and count the names. Group by district and you have to count the names. Here. Okay. No. Select count names. Yeah. yeah. I think using yeah, uh, uh, I should have different output for each this This one will work I think if you sum the count. Just sum the count. Here? Yeah. The group by stays the same and the count will go there. Yeah. So group by districts. Group by districts. Yeah. This should work. Group by. Group by. Like that. Yes. Is it? Okay, let me open it. Uh, if I can use a group function. Uh, if, we, if we turn in the results, right, like the count is one, but the results were like one, one, three, one, one, one. So six ones and one, one, three. So which is nine. So if we have uh, some way to sum those results, you can get the results by using Harvey. Exactly, exactly. I was thinking about that, but I don't know how to sum those one. Uh, okay, uh, I think guys, the time is uh, it's uh, it's already gone. So, this, if you have time. Let's just try to experiment that if you can use the having clause uh, for that specific uh, challenge. If not, we can conclude that you can not use the having clause, but if you can, we can we can use the having clause for the condition part of the SQL query. Uh, that would be great. Thanks, thank you. I think this was good and uh, yes, uh, we can wrap the session.